morning, everybody. First of all, I'm glad to be here today with you. I will actually speak uh, English, so I hope that this is uh, okay for everybody. And in the next 20 minutes, I would like to share with you the experience of uh, Leoni in deploying uh, Kata. So I will just shortly explain you who we are, how we are doing Kata in Leoni worldwide. And um, as Minai, we are working on an uh, interesting uh, obstacle to overcoming. And this one is why some managers are doing good and some are not doing good, actually. So who we are? We are a full service uh, provider of the wiring system, number one in uh, Europe and number four uh, worldwide. You are having uh, our customer represent 70% of the global automotive market, and uh, we are present in 16 countries uh, where we are having 35 production sites as well research and development centers and competence centers. Uh, we are having a global headcount of uh, 53,000 people and the total production space around 500,000 square meter. So we had tried in these 35 production sites to see how we can actually support with Kata the growth of the company. But before this, why actually Leon is starting to do Kata? So how this fit that uh, it was took the decision that Leoni will start with Kata? As many other companies, Leoni have a productivity system, so called Leo LPS Plus. And the vision of the productivity system is actually by day to day, improving each and every process, we will achieve 100 value added and we will increase our competitiveness. So when the vision was redesigned in 2007, um, it was looking very nice, but then actually it uh, came the question how we could do this. And we had found out in that uh, time that was already starting an idea of what we call today Toyota Kata, that this will actually enable our employee to be able actually to work day by day in the direction of the vision. So in this, in this way, actually, Leoni starting to use Kata. And the starting point was actually in 2007, when on that time it was called creating continuous flow using process analysis, together with uh, Mr. Ralph Winkler from Lean Partners, in a pilot plant. So this pilot plant, it. Uh, actually was the plant from Bistrița, from where I'm coming, from Romania. And because the pilot uh, was successful, the decision of the top management was to deploy it worldwide, and this had start uh, for training one representative who should then go to deploy in all the plants. And actually, this uh, top uh, decision to do it, it was not working as we had uh, planned. And at the end, between 2009 and April 2012, only the pilot plant, actually, Bistrița, keep the focus, and mainly keep the focus on improvement kata. So it was more perceived, actually, as an improvement tool. Then in May 2012, uh, the top management of the company decided to have a re-kick-off uh, on global deployment in all the sites, and the um, re-kick-off to be started by buying in the management team and provide an awareness training in Kata. <coughs> then actually by July 2013, we was again not very successful. We had the awareness training complete only on the 14% of our production sites. So that in that moment, it was decided not only to just actually say that we want Kata, it was decided to have a top executive group uh, who will actually work to review and to promote the Kata. And from that moment till today, we was managing actually to have the awareness training and to start the deployment in 87% of our um, 
factories. We uh, managed to have a skill development plan for CATA practitioners, managers, and trainers. To have a quarterly follow-up with two focus, the people development and the improvement results. And more and more, actually, we are using CATA on CATA deployment. And mainly today, we are somewhere in the middle of the deployment. Some are more advanced, some are more um, at the beginning. And we propose actually ourselves in a maximum of 18 months to be able to qualify the top management as second coach and the middle management as first coach. How actually is looking day by day, you can see from Bistrița, from Romania, from Tunis, from Morocco, from Montigny, Russia, Mexico, uh, China, uh, Egypt, everybody is on the same approach, having a board, meeting daily, having a coach, having a second coach. And we are trying to integrate as well the office area, as you can see, Montigny is a competence center, and as well as the production plants always trying to follow near the process, the deployment of Kata. So this is mainly like we are doing somehow, I believe that is the same like we saw to the other ones. But what actually we had learned in this process of doing it daily is that some managers are doing good, some are doing good but without long-term approach, and some cannot mobilize themselves to start. So we was asking ourselves, why is the same input giving so different results? And uh, together with a systemic coach, we was trying actually to understand why this is happening. And uh, before understanding why actually the manager are not doing kata, I would like to ask you to uh, answer to a short question. Have you ever tried to uh, plan on the New Year's Eve things that after that you wonder with yourself why it's so hard to keep them. For sure everybody wants next year to make more exercise and to keep them, I'm sure of this. But actually uh, we was asking why this is happening. And we had realized that uh, in that moment what we are trying to do is to control the things. And we was discussing actually with the manager who had started to make the um, improvement and coaching kata and they could not sustain it, why actually this is happening. And we realized that is the same thing also to them. They was trying to control. And then we asked them, okay, but you are doing things and you are doing things good, we suppose. And how you are doing in that moment the good things? So what's happened in that moment that you managed to do them? And it uh, was actually uh, surprised that uh, they could not answer. Well, I don't know, I just do it, I'm, I'm not thinking. And then we realized actually that they do it from a natural state that even they don't think about. So how we could bring this natural state actually in the kata that you don't even think about, you don't need to control it to do it. So the important at the end we realize is that is the state that you have and the state is coming from how you look at things. So we was asked how we have to look at the kata daily in order to get the inner state that will make the manager to maintain it on long term. So we had learned that there are two sides of the coin. One side it is not enough to focus only the structure routine on improvement kata. So this is what we can see, the external behavior. We can see daily versus random kata meetings, using facts and data versus vague or assumption, open versus closed question. So this is very good and need to be focused, but this is the external. The other side is the aware of the inner state of the people, of the manager. 
And this is actually something that we cannot see. We can see the behavior with the kata, but we cannot see the inner state of the person. And this inner state mainly are our decision processes, thinking strategy, our perception, our assumptions, our intentions. So this is very important, actually, the state that you have in order to make all the external things required by kata. And my, maybe m some of you already are familiar with the metaphor used to describe this external and internal state. So mainly the uh, external behavior is more the rider, and the uh, internal is more the elephant. And we know that without a very good relation between the rider and the uh, elephant, who is at the end much more powerful, you end up by not necessary when the rider say yes, I want kata. And maybe, do you remember how each of you was after the first uh, awareness training? The majority are going back, they want to do it starting with tomorrow. And when you really started? Because at the end, the one who make a change is actually the elephant. But on the other side, the elephant is lazy, and he wants the pay to payment today. He don't want to invest on long term. And at the end, with kata, it's a small investment daily till you really get it in the natural state to be able to do it. So we was actually focusing to understand how our elephant what, how I know my elephant, how I could understand it, how I could work with him in order to bring me to be successful with kata. And I would like to show you, actually, before uh, sharing the, how we understood the inner state, what the elephant can do to you if you are not uh, understand him very well. Can you please support me with the movie? <laughs> Actually, we should be very careful with the elephant. And what was actually interesting when we was looking on this movie together with the systemic coach and the exchange, okay, what you, what, how was for you? Uh, I had perceived it more as I should be very careful with my elephant, and I should understand it because I don't know maybe when he won't, don't want to do things. And the interesting part was that the systemic coach understand it like. In the coaching, you need to work with the mentee, but at the end, you need to work, to work with his elephant because you are not very sure when you, as coach, normally also as manager, his elephant will come, actually. Because in the coaching, a most, the most important is to work with the elephant of the people. And how we can see, actually, the inner state? How we can see the elephant? We create a hypothesis that if the inner state will be on the green area, then all the managers will be good. So we were trying to describe, we call them so-called successful factors, based, actually this is based on the in-seat evaluation model, and we were defining how the elephant should look like. And we had assumed that if all the managers all the elephant of the managers, of the people who need to practice kata, will be in the green area, then all of them will go good with kata. And I will, why actually we was thinking this, I will just show one of the examples, how this is linked with kata, and mainly what is the inner state and impact in kata. One of the points is that you are able to consider different uh, perspective. So what this means, you need to under, uh, f consider the 
to respect the perspectives, you need to adopt the perspectives of others, you need to be interesting in knowing how others perceive you, and to be able to look at the wall and observe the connection. So what would happen actually, and why we believe, if one respect other perspective is not in the green area, then the coach, for example, will stick to his opinion and perceive only for his frame, but not understanding the other point of view. If actually ad you to, this means adopts the perspective of other, it won't be in the green area, they won't be able to evaluate good the learning zone of the mentee. Or if being interesting in uh, knowing how others perceive you, if this is not in the green area, then the mentee or the coach, they won't evaluate, correct the impact of his behavior in others. So this, as a coach, you need to be focused on how you will be perceived by your mentee. And if the free, it is not in the green area, then particularly for the second coach, won't see the interaction, the interaction dissociate from the perspective of others. So this is why we believe actually that the success factor that we identify and the are having a link with Kata, and if they will be in the green area, then all the manager will be successful to use it day by day in um, what we have to do. What is our next step, actually? We want to evaluate in a pilot plant, so the same pilot plant where we start also the deployment, the manager, to know their current state and help them to reach the targeted state. So this is actually for us just like a process analyze. Yes, we have a process, we go there, we have some five steps who are following, we know to make a process analyze. But on the other side, we have also a mentee, we have also a coach, we have also a second coach. And we also need a process with them and for us was more like our, what are the process steps, so how I can identify the obstacle. So this is how we want to use actually our learnings, to understand the current state and help them to reach the targeted state. We are not sure how to develop actually these skills, but this is what we will learn by applying now the success factor that we had uh, defined. And I have also a question for you. So who wants to join us in this learning is uh, welcome, because maybe you, some of you experience the same ups and downs. You start, a period is going well, then again you have a break, then again you need to restart and restart. And maybe uh, it will be for all, of, for all of you useful and for us for sure to share with us. So if you are interesting, you can contact me in testing the hypothesis and sharing the learnings. So the question, I believe, will come after. <laughs> so I would like to thank you and uh, waiting for your questions. Thank you very much. Then I will take Gerd wieder nach vorne. Oh, please, please stay with me. Just for the questions. <laughs> no problem. Um, so if possible, please ask your questions in English, if not in German. So <laughs> we will cope with everything. I can answer in Romanian if you want. <laughs> Romanian is an option too. Okay, perfect. Yeah, position. Uh, I have one question to Ms. Murzan. I always thought that the uh, kata coaching does not go very deeply in the personality of a person. Now when I look at your presentation, I heard other things or other direction. You said some of the leaders, they, they work very well with the kata and they will do it. Mm -hmm. Perhaps even with another method, could be but some have their problems with their attitude. 
which perhaps comes from their values or from the history. So you work now with a systemic coach. What do you think uh, will be the success factors for the next steps? So I don't know if it's really going to the personality, you know, because uh, this is to, but at the end to succeed, uh, we need to follow some, uh, all, all the ones who succeed follow some factors. So we have to identify, we had identified what are these factors, and now we will work at the end together with a systemic coach to do this. How we will do it, I'm not very sure yet, so we even don't know if these are the success factor who should, but we wanted to identify we are all human beings, we are whole, all different. But at the end, we know that some are succeeded, some are doing good, and some not. So we wanted to understand what's making the difference between the one who succeed and the ones who did not succeed. Not necessarily going too much in the personality, but all, all more in their abilities, their way of behaving. So we don't want to change the people. We just want to find what are actually the, the s factors that if you are aware of them, if you are aware, then you could work with them and uh, get better. But we, our learnings was that it's not only, I'm sorry, the five questions. Yes, this is a start. But then to be able to understand your mentee, to understand your coach as second coach, the first coach, and to improve, then you need to go more also in the... <laughs> in the uh, persons, so to understand what makes them successful. Um, Carsten Klage, Siemens uh, AG. Quick question, I understood your target condition very well. I, how are you going to measure the current condition? What's your I idea um, to, to measure all the categories? Uh, so we will, um, in the back of this, actually, how you get these results, there are 500 questions, short questions that each manager need to answer. And out of the answering of this question, actually, you are getting the profile. So by each of the manager will answer this question. So in this way, we will do um, okay. the current condition. Okay. Second question, are you going to be here on the fifth uh, practitioner day <laughs> next year? <laughs> this is the plan. Very good, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, other questions? No questions to Berlin Tegel. Alex. <lacht> Hallo, Alexander Hein, äh, Lean Partners. Und ähm, ich habe eine Frage an Herrn Plüger. Und zwar ähm, war er sehr ambitioniert. Ne? Und ähm, hatten Sie selber Zweifel? Und wenn Sie welche hatten oder eins der Teammitglieder, wie sind Sie dabei umgegangen? Also, das ist äh, schon ein sehr sportliches Projekt gewesen. Mhm. Ähm, äh, ja, also, wie sind Sie damit umgegangen? Ja. Ja. Ähm, ja, das war, war ja tatsächlich so und jetzt nicht, nicht so vorgespielt, äh, wir wissen nicht, wie das geht, sondern das war tatsächlich. Ne? Ähm, wir mussten ja in ein komplett neues System rein mit, 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 einer, mit einer Anforderung, die wir bisher so noch nicht umgesetzt haben und auch nicht, wirklich nicht wussten, wie es geht. Ähm, ja, natürlich war mir das bewusst, dass es keine Garantie gibt, so ein Ziel zu erreichen. Und das war auch die Risikotaste, die wir mit Sicherheit relativ tief gedrückt haben. Weil wenn Sie mit so einem Gesamtteam unterwegs sind und Sie haben die Messlatte dann äh, doch vielleicht drei Zentimeter zu hoch gelegt und das ganze Ding geht im Bach unter, das wäre die Riesenlachnummer gewesen. Ne? Ähm, ich habe da nicht wirklich drüber nachgedacht, weil äh, ich glaube, was dieses Projektteam ausgezeichnet hat, war, ähm, dass die natürlich irgendwie eine den Glauben hatten, dass es möglich sein müsste. Ja, das hat keiner wirklich gewusst, wie. Aber alle haben gedacht, es müsste machbar sein. Ja. Und dann haben die natürlich gespürt, 
wie die sich da gegenseitig ergänzen und, und, und dann auch echt gemeinsam, gemeinsame Sache gemacht haben und dafür gefeitet haben. Und, und dieser Zweifel, ob das klappen wird, der war immer da, aber er wurde eigentlich nie artikuliert, mhm. ähm, weil es einfach dieser, dieser Blick nach vorne war. Da war keiner, der sagen wollte, ey, an mir liegt das jetzt, ja, dass sie das, das, das Projekt nicht hinkriegen, sondern die Leute haben ein Gespür dafür entwickelt, wo sie dann noch ein zweites und ein drittes Mal hingucken müssen, um auch bestimmte Prozesse abzusichern. Ähm, also das, das, es war niemandem von vornherein klar, dass es geht und es war tatsächlich spannend, bis ungefähr zwei Wochen vor Projektende, da zeichnete sich wirklich ab, ja, das kann klappen. Da kamen ja relativ viele spannende Punkte auch erst ganz zum Schluss, nach dem Motto, funktioniert dieses Werkzeug, funktioniert diese Integration, die wir in dem Umfeld nie gemacht hatten zuvor. Aber das war auch diese Zuversicht des Teams. Ja, und die haben diese Frage, könnte das auch schief gehen, also dieses typische Bedenkenträgertum, das hatte da irgendwie in den Reihen keinen Platz. Genauso wie wir das Thema Schulzuweisungen wirklich nicht erlebt haben. Und das, das, das sage ich so, wie ich das meine, so wie ich das jetzt sage. Und das wurde nicht rein moderiert, ja, nein, wir müssen hier alle schön miteinander ordentlich umgehen und bitte keine Schuld, das, das gab es einfach nicht. Das war, ich glaube, das war dieser, dieser Siegeswille, wir wollen das Ding dahin kriegen und da möchte ich dabei sein und es und, 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 und hat wenig Raum dafür gelassen für Zweifel und Schuldzuweisung. Okay, danke schön. Und gleichzeitig noch mal eine zweite. Bei dem Gruppencoachings, wie hoch war da etwa der Zeitbedarf? Und was passiert, wenn ich jetzt an einem Hindernisjahr arbeite und jetzt kommt aus dieser Schnittstellenproblematik ein plötzliches Hindernis, welches ich noch zusätzlich mit bearbeite? Wie, wie geht das etwa vonstatten? Ähm. Um. Frage 1, Zeitbedarf von diesen Gruppencoachings, das war maximal eine Stunde. Wir sind ja um 11 Uhr angefangen, wir waren eigentlich regelmäßig um 12 Uhr fertig. Ähm, diese Gruppen waren auch so aufgebaut, dass natürlich verschiedene Disziplinen zusammenkamen. Wenn eine Fachdisziplin irgendwie abgehändelt war und es ersichtlich war, dass die einfach nicht mehr gebraucht wird, weil wir jetzt nur noch über eine andere Schnittstelle oder ein anderes Schnittstellenpaket gesprochen haben, dann wurden die vielleicht auch mal nach 10 Minuten entlassen und sagten, alles klar, wir sehen uns morgen. Ähm, ja, wie das mit den neuen Schnittstellen war, es war kein formaler Prozess, sondern es war ein Team von Leuten, die diesen Prozess zum Laufen kriegen wollten. Und ähm, dann war das auch ein iterativer Prozess. Erkennen des Problems war das Erste, okay, da haben wir auch gar nicht dran gedacht, was könnte da passieren. Dann waren eigentlich alle an Bord, die gesagt haben, das könnte meinen Prozess betreffen, das wird ja für mich bedeuten, ich müsste dann ja, was weiß ich, nochmal eine Woche eher fertig werden. Und derjenige, der das ganze Thema dann im, im Weiterentwicklungsprozess hinter zum Schluss auf, auf den Schoß kriegt, der war auch dabei und sagte, Mensch, das muss für mich aber bedeuten, ich brauche eine Trainingsphase mit den Mitarbeitern, weil wir haben heute niemanden an Bord, der den Prozess überhaupt bedienen kann. Und schon war einer auf dem, mit, mit dem Trainingsgedanken unterwegs und sagt, oh, das heißt, ich muss mir jetzt Gedanken machen, wie ich die Leute qualifiziert kriege, dass wir am Zieltermin in die Serienfertigung gehen können. Und das ist einfach iterativ aus dem Team herausgewachsen, weil wir tatsächlich danach gefragt haben, aus, gibt es noch aus Ihrer Sicht, so am Ende dieses Gruppenmeetings, gibt es aus Ihrer Sicht irgendetwas, was jetzt ersichtlich ist, was diesen Endtermin gefährden könnte. Ja, und das waren dann zu dem frühen Zeitpunkt auch immer die kleinen Bausteine und die haben wir eigentlich immer sofort angegangen und haben gesagt, okay, was davon können wir jetzt bis morgen noch klären. Das war irgendwie so, dies, so wie es dann tatsächlich lief. Frage beantwortet? Ja. Vielen Dank. Wir haben noch Zeit für eine Frage. One other question. Bitte schön. Von gleichen Firma Dataforce. Ähm, was, was ich noch nicht ganz verstanden habe, von, von woher kam diese Zielvorgabe? Ich meine, das ist ja doch eine sehr erstaunliche Zielvorgabe, sozusagen 240-fache an Produktivität zu verlangen. Ist das von oben gekommen? Oder, den Kontext habe ich noch nicht ganz verstanden. Weil Sie haben es ja jetzt gut gemanagt, in Zukunft wird ja immer 240-fache Produktivität grundsätzlich jetzt die Vorgabe sein. Oder was? Also interessiert mich mal überhaupt sowas. <lacht> ja. ja, davor fürchte ich mich auch schon vor der Aufgabenstellung. Nein, das wird natürlich, also woher kam das? Ähm, da müsste ich jetzt was zu dem Gesamtprozess vielleicht sagen. Äh, der Gesamtprozess war, der ging eigentlich los, bevor wir mit Qatar angefangen sind. Ja, und das war eine ziemliche... Äh, intensive Auseinandersetzung damit, ähm, wo wir stehen, ja, was, wir, was wir für Entwicklungsthemen vor der Brust haben, wo wir glauben, hinwachsen zu müssen, damit wir auf Dauer international äh, wettbewerbsfähig bleiben können. 
Und äh, da war schon mal eine, eine ziemlich klar formulierte und auch vom Gesamtteam geteilte, ähm, geteiltes Verständnis von der Notwendigkeit, sich zu verändern. Das heißt, als wir mit Cutter angefangen sind, haben wir gewusst, warum wir uns für dieses Werkzeug entscheiden. Und als wir das dann konnten, ähm, haben wir natürlich auch gesehen, was man damit machen kann. Und dieses ganze Thema Lean war eher etwas stiefmütterlich ausgeprägt. Da haben wir natürlich gesagt, Mensch, da steckt da jede Menge drin. Aber jetzt, wo wir mit so einem Werkzeug umgehen können, jetzt können wir doch mal probieren, an diese echten knackigen Themen ranzugehen. Und dann war das eigentlich irgendwas, wo wir sagen, ja, ey, sowas müssten wir doch mal machen. Das kam irgendwie dann in einer Diskussion auf, äh, weil die Frage im Raum stand, jetzt lernen wir alle Cutter, was machen wir damit? Ja, und, und dann ist das auch in diesem Team irgendwie so ein paar Mal hin und her geworfen worden und ey, wir hätten da schon einen Prozess, das könnten wir mal machen. Und dann sind wir halt mathematisch rangegangen. Also wenn wir es jetzt nach Lean-Prinzipien machen wollen, was müssen wir dann haben? Und, dann, und diesen Prozess hat aber jetzt auch dieses gesamte Führungsteam aus diesem Bereich mitgemacht und das war zum Schluss klar, das ist unser Auftrag. Also es kam nicht top-down, sondern es ist eigentlich in der, in der Logikkette entstanden und, und deshalb wurde das auch von dem gesamten Team hinter einfach akzeptiert, jo, das ist die Messlatte. Ja, vielen Dank.